Okay, so let's get a little more convoluted here. We have an untitled window. It's um, actually containing a scroll pane, but you know we don't, don't know which scroll pane. So let's see if we can do something. First off, let's see if we can inspect it. Yes, of course we can. And it's a system window 3847. So let's open a workspace. And let's see, we've got a scroll pane in there, 3695. So let's go scroll pane all instances. And you notice one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one is the scroll pane in here. So we can actually create a variable for it by saying scroll pane all instances at five. My scroll pane one equals scroll pane all instances at five. And sure enough Let's do something really spiffy here. First, we're going to set a neat little thing. We're going to create syntax highlighting. Notice it now colorizes our text for us. And we're going to create textual references to drop morphs. Mysterious. So let's drag this out and drag it in. Is it embedded? It, nope. Let's try that again. Drag it in. Should be this time. Yes, it is. Okay. So what the heck does that mean? Well, if you notice the systems window As a scroll pane, we can inspect by going through, finding, inspecting, and in fact, it has a transform morph. So let's uh, inspect some more. Drill down, drill down, and let's see what happens. A paste-up morph. What's in the paste-up morph? A pluggable text morph. Finally, we have our pluggable text morph. And if we were to inspect it, we would see that indeed it is that same pluggable text morph. So you see how nesting works in, in morphs. Everything can be nested within everything else. Okay, so going back to our little thing of what the heck was that uh, create textual reference. Let's create a new morph from alphabetical list. Let's find a curve morph. Or how about even Yeah, curve morph is good enough. Curve morph. Let's put it there. All right, now we have a reference. If you inspect this, you will see we now have our curve morph. Someone was telling me that this isn't true programming. Well, yes, it is. So let's inspect this again. And let's see what we get. We get vertices. There's a couple of vertices. Let's make that a little bigger, and you notice we're now getting more vertices. Come on, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so we're on the fly creating vertices, and on the fly we're examining them. And if we wanted to, we could actually 
go in and modify one of those vertices, but I'm not going to. But you get the idea. So, we have a morph here. What can we do with this morph? Well, we can go to siblings and make multiple instance of siblings. Let's make five of them. And now we have five separate morphs, which we can just play around with. Notice they're all individual. They aren't clone, or they aren't reflecting each other. They're, they're actually their own separate entities. They're just all of the same class and started out with the same basic shape. It won't let me embed one in the other. Interesting. So anyway, we get the idea. And in fact, they're part of that same scroll pane. And we can move them out just as easily as we move them in. And they're now part of some other scroll pane. But if we want to find out what the heck, notice it gave us a list of all of these different curves, and we could actually inspect each one individually if we wanted, or whatever. We could manipulate them, we could embed them in something else, we could program with them, we could open up the class browser and start manipulating. We could actually do things like, say, create a new class, and this is subclass of the original class, and say, make this a member of the new class, and start programming our new class on the fly using the existing class as a template, etc. 